Hello everyone. We are so thankful y'all are here to join us today. We're going to be painting a gorgeous Easter Bunny cow. So this is a Highland cow. We love this cow because, well, <laughs> this is a funny reason, but because of all the hair down in front of the eyes, I think beginners love to paint the Highland cow because they don't have to worry about painting eyes. So it does make for a very fun and easy process. This is going to be our model today. So this is what we'll be painting. And by the way, my name's Tiffany. I'm the tipsy artist. I'll be guiding you through this step by step. We make it very fun and easy. So we've got this. Also, let me show you what comes with all of our kits. So I always make sure that you've got the traceable line art, the transfer paper, the canvas, and all the tools and supplies. We're gonna shift camera views here in just a moment and get to that. Um, but I will talk to you about this process first. So we have upgraded all of our kits to just be a nine by 12 inch which I love. Uh, it still fits in the box really nicely, but it's a little bit bigger than the 8x10. So I personally am a huge fan of 8x10 because I have thousands of canvas in my house. And so I'm loving the smaller canvas. Uh, but this has been a really popular favorite. Easy to frame, um, not too big to wear, because a lot of people that start to do this with me for a long time, they get overwhelmed with canvas too. So it's a great size, very workable. And um, let's talk about the setup on the transfer. So I always tape down, by the way, all that little bit of jing, jingling in the background. That's my sweet doggy, Ira. All right, so we're gonna talk about transfer paper first. So this is what transfers the image to the canvas. I always place, and this comes with your kit, and I always place the dull gray side facing up, and then I have the shiny black side facing down. I only tape up at the very top of the canvas. I like all of this to be really nice and free so that I can check my work as I go. So you really want to make sure you get every line and detail because did y'all hear that? My dog is still <laughs> it's going crazy over there. Um, so you really want to make sure that you get all of your lines and details in place because once you lift this off, it's almost nearly impossible to line it back up again, you know, if you miss something. So again, just double check as much as you need to. And again, that's why I keep all this free on the side so that I can lift up and check my work as I go. Now, let me, once I've got the transfer paper down, then I've got the line art on top here. And then I tape this again, just up, up at the top. And then we've got a pencil here in your kit. So basically every single time you see a line, you're just gonna draw right over the top of that line. So it's just tracing, real simple, over every line. We even provided you with extra detail for the hair and the sketching. So just, you know, really kind of gives you a, a comfortable feeling as you go into this process. All right, so I have worked ahead a little bit. So I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna go ahead and take this off because I've worked on my trace. And I'm gonna go ahead and use a pair of scissors here. So just snip that. I have the need for, I might need some sharper scissors. Go ahead and... All right, so. Cut that off. So this can be discarded. And I'm going to take off that excess tape here. All right, so this is what we're left with now. So I did my transfer work ahead. And so at first, it looks just like I'm going to bring this a little bit closer. So you can see how some of it looks like pencil marks and then some of it looks like Sharpie marks. That is not your imagination. Um, so the transfer paper makes what looks like pencil marks on the image. That's awesome. That's a lighter look. You could just choose to go with just that look. Your kit also comes with a permanent marker. So I go over all the outline and all the heart, you know, all this, all the main shape of the cow with my permanent marker as well. So that it really gives me a lot more comfort as I go into this. All right, so we are good to go. So this is exciting. All right, so we're at a great place now. I'm gonna go ahead and place this down. We are going to switch camera views. So I'm, I've got another camera here. I'm gonna go ahead and see there. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Now I need to do a little reorganizing. Not using this for right now or this. Okay, 
So I'm gonna place this here to the side. And this looks pretty good on. All right. We have our model here to view, our painting, our supplies. We've got napkins. Put that off to the side now. And the pencil, we're not using those anymore. We have our family at brushes. So this is Mama. And this is Little Buddy. And this is Little Bit. And I love Taclon brushes. They really hold up well, last a long time. And they're also very firm and they paint well. I just love them. And then I've, I do have a little bit of pre-paint set up over here to the side. So I'm going to go ahead and position this over to the side. And then I've got my bucket of water here. All right. And then your paint kit, depending on which paint kit you get with us, this one I know will have this paint kit with us. So this is, we've got lovely art tubes there. That is awesome. But most all of our paint kits have this basic standard set. But you can always see that on our website at tipsyartist.com. All right, so we are going to get started with the background first. So I'm going to be using the Mama brush. Now you'll have a brand new brush with your kit, so I always encourage you to just touch into the water a little bit, make sure that it's nice and soft and flexible, and then I dab out all of that extra moisture. And then also really important to note too, as we continue painting, please note that acrylic paints will set up and dry very quickly on the surface area and that includes your brushes so if ever you are switching between brushes never just leave a brush sitting out with acrylic paint just off to the side like this always either clean it immediately in the water or just leave it sitting in the water that is much safer than just leaving it out because the acrylic paint can just set up and dry on your brush and ruin your brush in one setting so you do want to be careful with that all right so the first two colors we're going to get started with are some titanium white and some primary cyan blue. We're gonna start with these two here. So I have some on my plate over here nearby. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the Mama brush to start with. I'm going to pick up just a little dollop of the white, place a little bit of that there, and then just a little tiny touch of that primary cyan blue. It looks like a little pea-sized amount. We're gonna work that into that white have to bring that a little bit closer. And you can even add a little bit of water to this to make the paint a little bit more uh, fluid and easier to move around. The beautiful thing about having the canvas flat is that you can add a little bit of water to it and you have no concern about water runs, which is really, really nice. As opposed to using an easel, you have to really be mindful of water runs. So we're gonna go ahead and start to place this into our background. Again, this is the, the uh, titanium white and primary cyan blue. And I'm just going to position it on the canvas by making little tiny X's over and over again. And you could also add just a teeny amount of water to this too to help really spread that paint out. And then as I'm working here in the background, I also like to touch back in to that white and just crisscross that into that color. So I have a little bit of variety happening in the background where it's not just one solid color. And I really want that white to kind of show up, crisscross it back and forth. Okay. Now, as we start to do our cut-in work, we need to position our brush a little bit differently. As we're working into the background, we're holding the brush more over to the side, parallel to the canvas. This gives you a really light hand, helps you get a lot more, um, a, more of an opaque finish on the surface area. As you do your cut-in work, you wanna hold the brush more like a pencil. So you get that nice thin line edge. So we're gonna use that as we cut in around that shape. So one of the reasons why I love that hard black line for me personally and for beginners is that if you happen to have a little bit of overpaint, which can happen a little bit for beginners, then you do not lose your trace. It is still there in place for you. It will bleed through. 
So, and then that's another reason why too, I didn't do all hard lines in the middle because I didn't want that to bleed through. So some of this I do want to bleed through to give me a reference and sometimes not. So I'm very intentional about that strategy. So every time you see a black line here, I definitely with intention wanted to make sure that it's very uh, noticeable and will stay there, even if I happen to do a little bit of some light overpaint in the beginning. So I've got my blue here and I'm gonna go ahead and crisscross in a little bit of that white, see how beautiful that is. Looks like a little bit of that awesome cloud cover that comes through the sky there. I'm gonna come around this cute little bunny here. We're gonna get into a tiny little section here. And as we come back out to this side, and just continue on with more crisscrossing, back and forth. Remove that shadow there, spread a little bit of white. Now some of this cut in work here can become quite tiny. So I'm going to switch over to a little bit of a smaller brush here in a moment when we get into these little areas here. Um, or I'm going to give you a little bit of like two different strategies. So as I mentioned, this bleeds through so you can do a soft little overpaint, especially if you have a little bit of water. You can do a soft overpaint and see how it just bleeds through and makes it a lot easier on beginners. That's a perfect example of when that really works in your favor. Now, if you really want to be meticulous and do a very precise little cut in, you can use your little bit brush and you'll want to twirl it into the paint. That will load up the brush, but it also twirls it into a nice fine point. And then you can do that really precise cut and work around those little leaves too. So that's a little option there. So touch you both ways. That's ear, so you don't want to paint into that. I'm going to go ahead and rinse this brush out. Set that off to the side. And you in all this background. Again, remember it's lots of repetition and lots of little crisscross. Again, it kind of makes you feel like you're doing the letter X over and over again. Now this is my sky coming in around the mountaintop. So again, this is that, I'm gonna do a slight overpaint because it is bleeding through and that way I know that my sky definitely will come behind those um, bits of like shrubs in the background. But if that makes you feel uncomfortable, again, you can do a really tight, precise cut in with the smaller brush, just like that too. So I'm going to give you a couple of options there for your comfort level. But again, with confidence, you can see that definitely bleeds through. I'll be able to see that. It's a crisscrossing back and forth. Don't forget to pick up some of that white again. Work that in while the paint's still wet. Just cross it back and forth.
Now the paint's still wet all the way around, so I'm going to work in a little bit more white. And just crisscross that on over the top. Watch your hand, make sure it is more parallel to the canvas. Out to the side, that'll give you a nice light hand. Has a lot more of that white paint to just rest on the surface. Yeah, I'm getting that really nice look of that cloud cover happening in there. Lots of repetitions, you just kind of softly blend that back in and just back and forth. All right, beautifully done. That's our background. Alright, so we've got our sky now. Now let's go ahead and start to work on the ground. So I'm going to rinse out my mama brush. It's going to take a little bit of firm spinning. So I'm going to spin it round and round and round. I keep kind of checking on it. I'm going to go ahead and wipe this off. A lot of white on there. So a little more. Spin cycle. And now we're good to go. All right, all good. So next colors up will be. Uh, let's. We're going to use a little bit of some primary yellow. I have some of that out here, and then we'll also use some bright yellow green. Let's spin this around. A little pea size amount of that. And then we're also going to use a little touch of this viridian. It's very dark, really pretty. And then of course we have our cadmium green, which is what I have already out here. So there's our cadmium green. All right, so I'm using my clean mama brush again. And I'm going to go ahead and go into this background, so I'm going to pick up some of this yellow and a little bit of this cadmium green. We're going to mix those two together. Okay, and then I want it to have a little bit more white in it, so I'm going to grab some of that titanium white we already have out and lighten that up. And you can see how this looks very similar to the bright yellow green too, so you can use some of that or just mix those colors together for that same desired effect. So we're going to go ahead and work this into our ground. So this is where his body begins. Here's our horizon line. I'm going to just just like that. And then here, the nice base of this light green to begin with. Let's do a little bit more white. Again, I'm going to lighten it up a little bit more so it's a little bit more white. Pulling down into big wide strokes. Come over this again with a little bit more texture. All right, it's very nice. And all right, so we want to add in a little bit of some different texture now. So I'm going to come in with the Viridian. Really pretty dark there. And I'm going to go ahead and work that into these little sections. The shrubs here in the background. 
Now I'm going to add just a teeny amount of black to this too. A little bit of black. That really darkens that green. Now we're going to use the brush with the line edge. So I'm going to make this line edge go all the way across. You can kind of play with a little bit, add a little bit more texture. It doesn't have to be exactly how we traced it. Same thing over here. Little pushes. Give it some nice texture. And then we're going to do that line here. I'm going to have little touches of that lighter green. Just kind of push those little tiny pushes into that dark. Creates a little bit of texture. Just like that. And then we're going to start to add a little bit of texture. My brush has got some of this dark on it. So I'm going to just kind of do little, little touches here into this ground and just add a little bit to it. Some little pulls to the side. A few little X's back and forth. As you come up underneath the shrubs, though, you want to make sure there's definitely contrast. You don't want to have something too dark on the brush that makes this line go away. So make sure you're definitely lighter. Do a little bit of white. Take a gentle side stroke across. Go back into that lighter green. I'll work that across. A little bit more green. Oops. I'm not able to pull out to the side here. I'm running into my camera stand here. I'm gonna play with those brush strokes a little bit. Play with the strokes. Kind of make it a little bit messy. I don't want anything too perfect. Now we're gonna work in a little bit of that dark on this side. A little bit of white. You know, and maybe even just a teeny touch of blue over here. So it kind of pulls in a little bit of slate, just a fun little color. You can do the same thing on the other side too. Gently pull that across. All right, lovely. Go ahead and kind of straighten this back out here. All right, let's go ahead and rinse out. Still hanging out in the bath, so let's take him out. Make sure he's nice and clean and dry. Okay. So next, we want to start to work on our sweet little cow here. So I'm going to use my little buddy brush 
and we're gonna work on these horns. I'm gonna turn my plate around, get in position. We have our titanium white and our Mars black. So there's Mars black. It's titanium white. Let's grab a little dollop of our titanium white, a little tiny touch of the black. We're gonna make a really light gray here. And sometimes I want a darker charcoal gray, so I'm gonna have that nearby too. So I'm gonna start with the darker charcoal gray and keep that on this edge. And our sweet little home cow. Same thing here on the other side. And we'll finish filling this in, the darker section, with that darker charcoal gray. Just holding that little buddy brush, just like you'd hold a pencil. Now let's pull into the, that white and lighter gray here. And softly blend that in. Softer gray. Pull that in right over the top. All right, there's just a slight touch, a little bit of pink in here that's happening. It's like a little bit of reflective light. So I'm gonna use a tiny touch of primer and magenta. Super tiny amount there. a hint of mauve, especially when it mixes in with that gray. I'm going to just lightly pull that through. And out. Now let's rinse out because I need a, a much stronger white to come up on top of that horn. So I'm going to dry off there. It's going to be quite a bit more white. Do a slight overpaint over what we just did. We get that nice soft blend. So hold that brush a little bit more over to the side. And then as we get into this thin taper, we can kind of change it and go to more of an angle to get into that smaller section. Some more pure white. Slight overpaint over that charcoal gray. And if you feel like your gray has already set up and dried a little bit here and you want that soft transitioning blend, work back into that dark charcoal and just work back and forth with it a little bit. You can work that back in and get more of that soft fade between the two. That way you're going wet paint to wet paint. I'm going to do the same thing here on the other side. That is looking really, really nice. Love it. Okay, so let's go ahead and rinse out now. Now let's go back to the bigger brush. And for this we want, we're gonna have to mix up a ground first. So I've got my mama brush. Now the kit that we have, you're gonna have to mix brown, it doesn't come with brown. So what we use is cadmium orange. Start with a little 
pea size amount of that to start with, or probably so much hair. Actually, let's go more with the, the quarter size amount. And then we will need some Mars cloth. Right. So, let's pick that up. Softly blend those two. So black, now I want to just give a closer look. See how that immediately goes to brown? That's really nice. So I definitely want to have the brown nearby mixed up. And you can even have a little bit more orange for that, because we have a lot of that in the hair. There's a lot of variation happening. So I'll want maybe some that has a little more orange, some that has a little more black for a darker look. The other thing we want is a much lighter tan. So we'll do some off to the side here. A little touch of white, we'll work that in. See how that's starting to get more of that tan color. You can also do a little bit of yellow with that. Now it's really getting to be more of a light tan. You can add even more white to that. We have all this clay now. So adding yellow, white, and then our brown mix can create lots of different shades because you can see there's a lot of variation happening there in the color of the hair. So I'm going to start light here. Start to pull down. And I'll go a little bit darker in the shading where I know I've got that ending there at the side end. And I go darker in with the ear here. And I'm just going to pull it down. It's almost going to feel like I'm pulling down a little parentheses. side of the circle, half circle, but again it kind of feels like parentheses. So this is that darker brown, I'm going to pull that down on the ear. And see, this is where that little face comes in with, you don't want to lose that face, that shape. So we're going to darken that in, a little bit of shadow there. We're going to have a little bit of that darker brown and shadow in here. All that darker brown just right in through here. Put those little shadows in place. So again, a lot of the stroke is just going to, again, it feels like those little soft curves. Look at that chin. Comes down. And then let's come up with a little bit more shadow here. Some more black, with that orange. Soft curves. little dark shadows in here. Now remember, we I know it's quite a bit darker, but we haven't worked in our lights yet, so don't worry about all the darkness that's coming into play there. It's quite all right. needs to be kind of thinned out on the edge. And then I'm going to 
kind of the smaller brush and do just a teeny amount of black in here. I want to make sure these nostrils don't get lost. So a little bit of black here. And then this is that mauve that comes in again. So our primary magenta is still here with a little of that soft dusty gray mixed in there. So I just work that in. It's very subtle, but that's what's happening right there inside that little tiny little nostril, that little nose hole. So yeah, nose hole. Okay, it's out for more black again. line happening there. And let's rinse out. Let's get some of the dark shadows in the face. Let's work that out. I'm gonna place this in my water bucket for just a moment. We're gonna switch over to little bit. Now I'm gonna go with that lighter brown here. And we're gonna work that right into this little section. Have that from our trace. Then we need some more of that like mauve look. So let's set out. Let's do some of that white and that primary magenta. If you remember, there's that. I still had some on my plate. Add some more white to it. And just a hint of that black so that it has more of like a dusty mauve look to it. Start to place this into the front of the nose. A little line of white right here. And then more of that dusty mauve here. And forth. And then come back in a little more of that brown. More white. Just a little bit more yellow. Working a little more of that pan here. And then we'll circle back and come in with more of that brown. Kind of softly put that in. Over the top there. Two just little tiny curves, little breast strokes. Alright, now is when we're going to come in with a lot more of the white, too. Uh, not white, I'm sorry, but like a, li a much lighter you know, hair color that will come in and flow over the top. I'm going to add a little bit more orange now to that brown. And we're going to start to work that in. Put a little section here. A little bit more yellow into the brown. And more white. Little soft curves now, so you, you really see that lighter hair coming through using my little bit brush. 
So again, the color mix on this, a lot of, much lighter, a lot more of that primary yellow. Still have our brown mix in there, but a lot more primary yellow and white. That really lightens it up over here. And so you've got your shadows in place, and you can just kind of work this in over the top. I'm just kind of be real playful with it, kind of pull that back in to that brown. Again, little soft curl strokes here. And then sometimes I play back and forth between the brown and that reddish brown. So that you get a nice soft play between the two colors. That's looking real good. So now there's going to be a lot of just quick play between those darker shades of brown. So we're going to keep some of those little shadows in place. And then go back into that lighter brown, which again is with our primary yellow, white, and brown. Just do some pure white too as you're doing this. Kind of pull that in. See that makes a nice little highlight. That's looking wonderful. I love it. Now you can also do a little bit of some abstraction. So 
you kind of mess with some little shapes. I'm going to show you what I mean. This is optional. So I've got a little more black with the brown, and you can do a little, kind of little swirl. You know, some of those in the mix too, if you want to create that little bit of taps of color. You know, or you can just, nope. <laughs> it's just up to you. You may go, no, nah, I think so. I'm not feeling it. So, either way. All right, so I think our cute little cow is looking absolutely gorgeous. I'm gonna go ahead and rinse out. And then we're, we're gonna work on that cute little floral bouquet. This is going to be really cute here. So, uh, all right, so I'm going to make, let's do our little bunny ears first here. So we've got our white, and we need a touch of our primary magenta again. Do a little touch of that. And we don't want the mauve this time, so we want it to be pure. I'm gonna go ahead and grab some more titanium white, work that into that primary magenta. This will give us a really pretty bright pink. It'll be really lovely. And that white nearby. So I want the darker sections of pink to kind of see where we've got that little shade that worked in from the transfer. So we want that right around the edge. Using my little bit brush for that. And then right around, we're just going to make like a little couple of loops. A big loop there, or a parentheses, another parentheses, another great way to think about it. And we're going to go ahead and do... Again, we have a little leaf coming out here in front, but this is where that beautiful little overpaint works great. It bleeds right through, so we can come back in and do the leaf again. But it's just so much easier just to do the nice little bunny ear behind it. We're going to have that little like bit of pink flow in there. That's so nice. Now we're going to grab a little bit more of that pure white, and we're going to work that into the center. Lighten it up right in the middle. And a little bit of that white right in the center there. Right. Looking great. Now let's work in some of our little flowers. So we've got more than just pink happening. I'm going to add a little bit of some cadmium red. And we've also got little touches of our primary yellow that we can use too. So I'm going to start with a little bit of that primary magenta. We had that out here already for the ears. We had the white mixed in with it. That's a great place to start. So I'm going to go ahead and work that into this little flower. So I'm going to pick up a little bit more of the primary magenta to make it quite a bit darker. And I'm going to just do a little bit of a push and then pull in. Take that all the way around the shape of that flower. So those little strokes are making like little petals. Now let's add a little bit more of that cadmium red for this next one. So I'm giving my little bit brush into the cadmium red and do a little push and then pull in. Really nice. And then let's grab some of that bright primary yellow. This makes up a little bit of a coral color. We're going to work that in with this little rose shape. Got a little bit more of that primary yellow. We'll just push it in little tiny the parentheses like that. It's got a little bit more light to this guy. Back 
back and forth little rounded circles. Okay, and then let's rinse out. And then let's grab a little bit of that white. And we're going to do just like little half circles of white. Very gentle hand on this because we want those little half circles to rest right over the top. That makes that little abstraction like a little bit of a rose. Same thing here. Look at that half circle feel. Let's push that on a little uh, circular motion around that. All right, so we have a little bit of a base to our flowers there, and then we can come back into the center and we're gonna push in just little dots of black. I'm gonna make sure this is all black here. So little touches of black, and we're just going to dot, 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 just kind of tap in little dots all in the center. Just like that. And then same thing here. Just tap in little tiny dots. And then again, just one, two, three, three little seeds in there. Same thing here. One, two, three, two little seeds in there. All right, we are good. I'm going to go ahead and rinse out. All right, I'm going to finish out my little ears here with that light gray. So this is going to be dollop of white. And then a teeny touch of the black, a little, really light gray, just barely. It's going to be mostly white. It almost looks white from the distance, but there's just a hint of light gray in there. So I'm going to go ahead and work into this ear. Let's push this water back, kind of get a little bit of shadow. This is that really pretty light, light gray. Ooh, just making the ear. I'll just use my little bit brush, just kind of paint this on. A long curve. I've got a little bit of a shadow happening there, so I can do a darker gray. Just run it through there. And same thing here, we're going to do a little bit of that darker gray around the edge. my white with that in. It's a little heavy on the gray. I'm going to kind of do a little quick wipe with my brush to get that out of there and then go back in with more white. And I picked up more just pure white and place it in over the top. Look at our cute little ears. Love it. Okay, I need a little bit of a shadow in here. Okay. I'm 
Alright, very nice. So now we can work in some of our cute little green wings. Alright, let's jet this back. And all right, so we have all kinds of fun green to play with because we had all that here. So we have our cadmium green, our viridium, that bright yellow green, we even have some of that yellow. So we can play with all that and work that in. We can also do a little bit of some fun turquoise in there too, which all you have to do there is just add a little bit of blue with your green and your white. That's also fun. And you can also do a little bit of some sage, which is going to be your green, your white, and a teeny touch of black. That's going to be that cooler sage color. And with these little touches here, you can just kind of like just do little touches to go into that little petal. And just kind of pull down so it's like a tiny little pressure touch and then pull down to the center. A little bit of that viridian. Now these uh, little shapes, that's actually more of a gray, but I'm going to do a few more of the green right through here. So I'm going to make a little bit of that pressure touch and then pull in. I'm going to do a little bit more of this turquoise look. So the green, cadmium green, blue, a little of that white. I'll do some of those. Ooh, that's really pretty too. That turquoise is pretty dynamite for a leaf. Get those soft touches and kind of pull that out to a little point. A little bit more white to it. Just give it a little bit of texture. Happening here. I'm going to do a few more here. And again, the leaf shape is just, it's most of the time it's just little touches in there. Now, I want my flowers to kind of pop back out over the top. And if you need to, you can let this set up and dry a little bit so you don't have to worry too much about a light hand. For the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and move forward. But I've got a clean brush and I'm going to work back into these brights. And I'm just going to be extremely delicate over the top so that I don't push in and blend too much with the green leaves that are all still very wet because I don't want those colors to blend. I'm just going to pick up a lot more of that primary magenta and that cadmium red, maybe a little bit of white. But I'm going to, just going to bring those little flowers right back out over the top again. Canyon. Do tiny little touches, even give it a little bit more of that texture that rests on top of the surface. And then one other little touch here that I think is quite lovely is a little bit of some lavender. So I'm going to grab some violet. Tiny touch of that, almost looks black on the surface. So we are going to grab some white and work that into that violet and that will immediately kind of pull it to a really noticeable, you can see it becoming like a very noticeable purple, which is quite, quite pretty. I'm going to 
twirl the head of my brush into that, get a nice fine taper, and I just want to add just little tiny touches of more of that purple or lavender, just a little bit. Just kind of sprinkle those around, just little tiny touches in there after this out. These are just little tiny little flowers of white, so I just do little tiny dots. Just a few little touches of those. And then also with these roses, I just want to do one more little tiny circle of white right around the edge just to kind of help those come right back out to the top. And if you lose a little bit of that shadow that you like, you can also come back in with a little bit more, just like a little soft curve. Of, like I just put a little bit of cadmium red. See how that brings back in a little soft shadow of the petal. So that's going to be our cadmium red there, the soft shadow. Alright, so we've got some really pretty little roses happening now too. Alright, now I'm going to come back in with a little bit more of my Here's just a tab. I'm just going to do a little twist here. Make sure I don't have any excess water that can drip on the canvas, but a little twist into that light gray. And we're going to come around. I'll make that pop out. So it's a little bit more defined now. Give me another little line out into there. Like that. Pull back in with a few little touches of white. Just do a little clean up here. really nice. Alright, I think we are done. This is quite lovely. And then all that's left to do now is to sign our masterpiece. Now, you want to make sure this is completely dry. What I do recommend to me, it's the easiest thing, is to sign with your permanent marker here. So this is dry. Again, the importance of this being dry is that if you place the permanent marker on wet paint, it will just kill your Sharpie immediately. So we don't want that. So it's dry, we're safe. I'm do a little signature here. Tipsy artist. 
Yay. Okay. So we're done. Y'all did a fantastic job. It has been a true pleasure painting with y'all today. We look forward to it each and every time. Again, all the supplies that you need with today's painting can be found on our website at tipsyartist.com and I will make sure and put the link below so it's very easy to find. But again, thank you so much for painting with us and y'all have a beautiful rest of the day and we'll see you again very, very soon. Toodles. Love y'all. Toodles. <laughs>